The next phase in, the, in making this, we're going to put a mortise hole through here, but first we want to drill these holes into the moving shoe part. This is the slide here. We want to put these holes in here the same way we've got them here. What happens when we apply the pressure here? This metal bar here hits the back of the rod here and the pressure is upwards. So the pressure comes on these two points in here. To get these two pieces here, we're going to use what we call a roll pin. I just bought a bag of roll pins on eBay. What roll pins are, these could actually be split as well. This one is slightly different. Here's one that has a split all the way down the length of it. This one is different. This one rolls into itself. So when you drive this through the hole, regardless of the size of the hole, even though this one is made for a four millimeter hole, which is the size of the hole that I drilled here and the size of all the holes we're going to drill are four mil. So when you drive this one in, the roll rolls into itself and gives a continuous bar. This one's slightly different. This one will work too. And this one, this is slightly oversized on four mil. When you drive this into the hole, it closes up as it goes into the hole. So we are going to use these to reinforce the uh, end, these ends of the mortise holes to strengthen it. So when the bar is under pressure, it hits those two pivotal points. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in from the end seven eighths of an inch. So can you see where everything is uh, oriented here? So we come in seven eighths of an inch here. Square the line across from top to bottom. This is just a clamp, so I don't mind seeing the line. There's my first line here. Then I take my bar, this is the exact bar I want, and I line this up exactly by sight by looking from above down onto this point here so I can see my line and I make a second line here. Just make a small mark and then go to your square like this and make the mark here. Now we're going to come up three eighths of an inch which is the same as this distance was here. So just continue this here. There's the three eighths point and what we're going to do is the three eighths is the center of the hole here this time so we want to make this hole on the outside of this line so that's on this side of the line we want to make this hole on this side of the line here so we're coming down three eighths here and up three eighths here so we're on here quarter of an inch down like that and we're going to drill a hole right through there now we want this hole to be square all the way through so what we do is we make a small jig just using knife walls again this could be anywhere on here I'm coming in half an inch from the end square a line across here square a line across here like this and then saw down on that line either side of the line it makes no difference as long as you're accurate with your saw step down just to guide the saw small tenon saw dovetail saw will work well saw down the line keep it square keep your saw square and stop wherever you want it doesn't matter where you stop come across the top with your square go to that saw mark that you made and square the line exactly across here. You can't put a step down this time, so go with your saw right on that knife wall. Start on the back, and this is going to guide you when you drill. So you want this one square as well. You could just use a gauge line This now goes on here and we line this up with the cut line here. So we're going to cut on that side of the line. So the bar goes in here. So we want the hole on that side and the hole on this side. So this goes here and you know these are, this is quarter of an inch down, this is three eighths of an inch up. 
It doesn't matter if you're a sixteenth either direction, as long as you don't go too close to those outer edges. So I go right on that knife wall there, pinch them together, and you can either clamp this together or you could pinch it in the vise. I'm going to put mine in the vise. And um, I've got to be square, so that's what this little jig should do. It should keep me square as I pass the drill into and through to the other side. So here I put this onto the, into the inside corner and then try and align the edge of the bit up and then start the drill like that. So I've got my hole started so it's right inside the corner like that. And it's right on the side of my line and I want to keep that exactly where it is. So now I go in but I keep this drill aligned on this surface and on this surface here. Just gently, just feed that in till it bottoms out. It's not gone all the way through, you can see I've stopped about a little, a little bit on the outside because I want to put a backer on here to catch this last bit. Now it's deep enough to be self uh, aligning with the hole itself. So now I can go in here into a scrap piece of wood so I don't have any breakthrough on the outer edge. Clean exit hole here is what I'm really asking for. So the same with this next one. Now this has to be this way around, so I don't have as much length. I want this to be spot on as well. So I don't have as much to grip in the vise there, so let's see how this works. That's working fine. So same again, start the drill slowly, just enter the surface fibers and then align the drill And a backer on here. And that's that. So now I can chop the mortises, lay out for the mortises, chop the mortises, or the mortise, just one really. So this goes pretty quickly. So I've got those cut lines there. So I want to transfer these onto the, the small faces. Here, so I'm just strengthening those corners just a little bit. Where are you? I can't see you. I want these to be square uh, from side to side. I don't want any discrepancy here. See that? Same onto these top faces here, this top face. Well, I'm calling it a top face. It could be an underneath face, really. So I know I know I'm square from side to side. I've got this gauge set and what I did is I'm just instead of using a mortise gauge you know on a mortise gauge a lot of times when you get down to a one eighth side these pins won't go less than say a quarter so I'm using a single pin gauge and I'm going from this side I've already set this to receive the one eighth uh, chisel so there let me black those in a little bit for you on my piece of my guidelines. So there's my chisel, it's going to go right in between these two. Same onto this face here, right between the lines. So in other words, I didn't go to this inside face, I went opposite faces, so I know these are dead centered in here now, these knife walls, these uh, gauge lines. And now it's just a question of chop, chop, and we're on our way through. So start away from the line, 
in between the gauge lines just give us a little bit of relief on this side so you can pick that off and then you can creep up you could go deeper I think I am going to go deeper here that's consolidating the walls as well which I would really want with this because there's going to be pressure on these bars anyway that are inside the mortise hole you'll see how this works in a minute so now I'm moving up to my knife wall I don't want to move that knife wall right into that last bit lever out that waist a little bit deeper lever out try not to break the end of the mortise hole it's not going to be the end of the world if you do but as we move over here see where you can feel that leverage so I'm going down quite deep here that will enable the mortise hole to go quicker as I move across Tease those fibers out. So I'm quite deep, really, if you think about it. I'm already over a third deep. Try and make your chisel perpendicular, but it won't matter because you're coming from both sides, and you can align up. You can align up the whole after anyway see I'm using the bevel perpendicular then I'll leave it at the bottom that's separating the fibers inside the mortise hole where I really can't see or feel too much Try and tease some of the fibers out. If you've got a 1 16th chisel or less, you could go in here and remove some of this waste. Bit awkward this size. It's working fine though. I'm pretty far down there now. Let's just see how deep we are because this will. So there to there, just under halfway. So I think what I'm going to do is go a little bit deeper from this side before turning over. Doesn't really matter. that should be close to taking this size it's pretty close a little tight on the width so I'm going to just go in here just to pare down a little bit more I think it's the width yeah that's great so we're on a good size same on this side now The bigger the bevel, like on this one, because this isn't a bevel edge chisel, you can see this is a mortise chisel. The wider this is, the more it's going to drive and consolidate those fibers. So you start much further away from your knife wall because of that. There's something about making tools and equipment that is just so rewarding. See, 
I didn't leave it too much on that wall because I want to keep this crisp. Feel I'm through there. And I'm through all the way there. I can see, I can see actually through the hole a little bit. This is where we've got to be careful. I want this to be, will this drive through here? Let's just give it a short start. And you can take a drill bit, um, which works perfectly well. You could take a drill bit like this. It's slightly undersized. And you can remove some of that waste, either using a hand drill, just to tease those fibers out. without drilling the walls there we have a mortise hole it's nice it's going to work I think so now I just have to tease the walls work the walls a little bit decide whether it's the width of the bar or the thickness of the bar that's and I think it's just the thickness of the bar not the width. So I'm going to go in with a half inch chisel and just pare down the wall, working to the gauge line. Because this does not need to be tight. The last thing I want is for it to be tight. I want this to move along the beam perfectly freely. Just clean up the corners. work from the other side. You can see this isn't really taking very long. Ten minutes maybe, five, ten minutes. It's probably the most tedious part if it is tedious. Let's try again, see what we have. I think we're close. Feel it getting tighter. It's not the thickness there, so it could be the width. Close. see right in the end so I'm only about a quarter of an inch from being through but I don't want to go all the way through and break that outer rim off I've done that before there it is nice and crisp and we are close to square can you see that so that's nice but it's got to slide and it's not sliding yet so i want to find out whether it's the width of the mortise well you see that's going to work just fine i think we're almost there so it just needs to be sliding I think it's the width of the hole, the, the, uh, this bar is catching on both sides, but this has a kind of a finish on it, so I'm just going to pair a little bit more in here, and then we can get back together and I can show you how we try the pins.
just a hair, not very much off here at all. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a couple of nails inside those holes, like this. I'm going to put a nail in here just to see how this fits after I've got this in here. So this is close. This works for me. Nicely fitted. So let's um, let me just try these pins in here now on either side just to see how the roll pins will work in here. And I think they're going to work just fine. So I can drive my pins in now. But I have to, what I had to do, and I want you to remember this, you have to make sure that this is sliding because the ends of the mortises can't be changed easily once you've driven your pins in there. So we're going to try a couple of pins in there, the roll pins. And these can always be extracted. You can tap these back out. A steel hammer somewhere. There's one. So I'm going to try this again. See, it did, it did affect it, but it's probably just the wood fibers on the outside of the tube. So that worked fine. Next one, this is the one that I really want to be, I don't want this one to tighten up at all. I think we're there. Again, I think it's, just the fibers. So I've got this dead locked on there. So all I have to do now is tap, you can tap these flush on one side like this. Have it protruding barely past the surface in both cases. Lock this in the vise and I'll do this so you can see. And I'm going to just take a hacksaw. I'm going to keep off the face of my wood. Now these pins are hardened steel, so you can just go halfway through and just break them. Once they've reached that point there, just break them off. Next one down here. That just saves breaking through, just snapping them. They don't break below the surface usually. This goes in the vise here, just a flat file. File it flush. Now you can use a nail, if you can get the exact sized holes you can use a nail for this. The only problem is that they can work loose. But look how neat we've got this surface here. Nice, smooth finish. I'm going to finish this side here the same way. A couple of file strokes here. There it is. So this is the main part. Now... I've got one virtually finished. We've got to put the mortise slot in here uh, and I'll show you how to do that next. So we'll get back together in a minute. That's that. That's, so that works perfectly well for my first clamping.